Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are going to be doing an Aki Monitor Care Guide. I've been doing a lot of Aki stuff lately, so I thought why not do an Aki Monitor Care Guide for you guys, um, where you have a comprehensive video of just everything you need to know about these guys. Um, they're probably, in my opinion, the best beginner monitor. Uh, so if you want to get into larger lizards and want to get into monitors, I think Aki's a great place to start. So, um, I think it's very important that you guys know a little bit about these guys before you get it. Because even I, when I first got them, I was told wrong things and it, it was pretty hectic. Uh, so I think there really needs to be a good guide on this on YouTube. So I'm hopefully going to be able to help you out with that. And we can go ahead and start taking a, a look at what we need for, uh, for these monitors. What we need to take care of them. And we'll talk about the necessary things we need from the start. What we need to do weekly. What we need to do daily. And you guys can see how much work uh, these guys are going to take and if it fits into your schedule. Real quick, before we get going, I want to shout out uh, herpcenter.com. Uh, I learned a lot about the Ackies through that website. I'll list a couple people, maybe around the video, wherever, um, who helped me out and were very informative. I definitely recommend go check out that forum. Uh, there's a lot of helpful people and very knowledgeable people in regards to monitors and many other lizards. So I just wanted to shout them out real quick because they're the reason I know so much today about these guys. Um, and I didn't feel right going ahead and not giving them credit. So uh, let's get to it now. To begin, the number one misconception about Aki monitors is that they don't require that much space. Aki monitors are very active and like to climb, so they will definitely use a lot of space. Thus, you'll probably want nothing less than something around five to six feet long, two to three feet wide, and definitely three to four feet high. You're gonna want about at least a foot and a half of substrate, which should probably be uh, organic soil and sand mix. Play sand is fine. You're also gonna wanna make sure that the inside of your enclosure is waterproof. Thus, if it's wood, you'll probably wanna coat it in a water-based polyurethane. Make sure it's water-based, that's very important. My two enclosures were built with some of the cheapest plywood sheets at Lowe's since I wasn't really going for a look, and then coated at least five to seven times in the polyurethane. The bottom two feet are covered in plexiglass because of the moist substrate. Now for what's on top of the substrate is you're gonna want a bunch of climbing wood. Uh, that's what I did here, and I have a whole video on getting wood from the outdoors and putting it in these enclosures that would be very helpful. Um, if I was to purchase this wood, it would probably cost two to $300, so, um, it's good if you can get it outside. But anyway, you're gonna want a lot of climbing wood. Also be aware if you use cheap plywood sheets like mine, monitors can really grow fine nails. So sometimes they could climb their way up a little bit um, if it's a little rough, which usually it won't get too far, but if there's a place that's very dented or something, you might wanna smooth it out with some sandpaper or something. Otherwise, you're going to want a big water bowl, something that they can take a little bit of a bath in when they drink. Um, you're going to have a humid uh, enclosure anyway. And then another bowl for their food, which is we'll talk about in a minute. Um, also, you want to build up a basking spot. <laughs> also, you want to build up a basket. Focus on the basking spot. <laughs> You're gonna wanna build up a basking spot so that there's different levels. You're gonna want something on the bottom, something that could absorb some heat, like that nice little uh, rock formation we got, and then maybe some wood tiers where they can get closer to light and sort of regulate how much heat they take in. Um, we also have UVB lighting, and we'll talk about the specifics of lighting in a little bit. Other than these things, the only other things you're gonna want is uh, maybe a couple hides. You can see there's a log back there. Um, there's a hide over here they can go, uh, Aces could go in. So you obviously want hides for pretty much any lizard or any reptile. So uh, other than that, that's pretty much the entire makeup of the enclosure. I do a bioactive enclosure, so I threw in some, you know, little bugs, different isopods and stuff. Uh, and that really helps like regulate the substrate and clean up the poop. So that's always good to get in there and I definitely recommend it. And it's also okay if some of their food, if you're giving them roaches, get in and uh, kind of live in the enclosure because it'll also help as well. You have a few options when it comes to heating, but generally you're gonna wanna use a halogen floodlight, not a spotlight. The wattage is gonna depend on the ambient room temperature and how sealed your enclosure is. 
I've used anything from a 30 watt to an 80 watt. I also have two of them in each of my enclosures. Uh, it helps diversify the temperature and widen the basking spot. Aki monitors require some of the highest temperatures among reptiles. The basking area should be anywhere from 135 to 155 degrees. In terms of UVB, I talked to the people over at Arcadia Reptile and they recommended their D3 plus 14% UVB T5 bulb and their D3 6% UVB T5 bulb for each enclosure. The length of the bulb should be roughly two thirds the length of your enclosure and your lizard should not be able to get within 12 to 15 inches of the light. As for humidity, these monitors require a high humidity, um, almost to the point whenever you open their enclosures, you should be hit with this like really big heat wave of just moisture. Um, if you look here, uh, you can see really closely that there's some water droplets on the outside. That's usually a good sign. If you have a really nice sealed enclosure, when you uh, make it, you know, pour some water in there, whatever, you should see some water droplets form up. Uh, you're probably, if you're measuring it, you don't want it to dip below 70%. I would probably sometimes let it get down to 70, 65% minimum, um, especially in Del, uh, Del's enclosure because she has kind of a little bit more open enclosure so it's tougher to keep humidity in, but anyway. Um, I would try to keep it around 80. 80% 80 is a good number. Anything higher won't hurt them, uh, but definitely don't go lower than 70. Now what I do is once a week, I will take two of these. Um, this is cold just because we also drink out of them. But um, I would take two of these, I fill it up in a watering can, and I do one of them on the half of the enclosure, and then another one of these on the other half of the enclosure. Now, if you want to save some money, you could probably get the um, purification for uh, reptiles. Uh, there's a bunch of different brands out there where you can just get tap water and then put in some of the liquid, or I don't know if some of them are tablets ever, but that also works as well. But this is, what, 101.4 fluid ounces, um, 3 liters. So two of these is usually what I do once a week, and it'll usually hold the humidity good for the week, and then I do it again every next week. So for feeding, I will mostly feed them a diet of gut-loaded dubia roaches. I have two colonies. I could probably do a video later on how I set up my colonies and breed them. Uh, you save a lot of money in the long run. But anyway, um, I'll usually take about 10 to 15 of them when they completely finish off their bowl. Uh, put them in this little Tupperware thing. Um, and then I'll take uh, just some regular calcium with D3. You could supplement some non-D3 in every now and then, but you're not going to overdose on D3. Uh, so it's it's fine to always just use a D3 one. Um, and any time I put in new roaches, I'll, uh, you know, I'll put the roaches in here, sprinkle some on top, wave them around, and then I just dump them in their food bowl. Um, and then I usually just let it go until they eat them. Um, Aki monitors are really good eaters, so you shouldn't have a problem. They're not too finicky. Uh, so I would just wait until you don't see any roaches in there anymore, and then you could uh, re-up on uh, the roaches. So other than that, I'll feed them maybe um, a small pinky once a week. They really enjoy that. Make sure you don't feed it too much though because they're a little fatty, so uh, uh, you might get a chunky lizard. But it's definitely a good snack and they love it. couple quick things before we finish up this video. One is about keeping two Ackies in one enclosure, or two, three, whatever. Sometimes that will work. Um, it's most likely to work if they're from the same clutch. Uh, that's what I heard. I tried putting Asus and Dell together in the beginning, and they did not get along. Dell is actually missing one of her fingers because of a bad fight. Um, my suggestion is you could still try it. It's possible, but always have a second enclosure ready. That's the number one thing if you're going to try to put two lizards together. Because typically, that's not going to work out, especially if they're both male. Um, the other thing is, I usually keep the heat lights on, actually all the lights, including the UVB, for 14 hours in the winter and 12 hours in the summer. Um, I don't believe that Aki's brewmate in any way, so I don't really think that's super necessary. I mostly do it because they're on the same timer as my Bearded Dragon and my Tegu, and... Um, you know, I just left it like that. Uh, plus, it kind of gets a little colder sometimes at night in my lizard room since it's not well insulated. Uh, but that's what I do. Uh, I don't think it hurts them or improves it really, but just throwing that out there. Um, and final note, 
all the products I sort of mentioned that I get, I'll probably try to link in the description uh, so that way you can go and find a way to buy it. Arcadia is sometimes a little hard to buy for the UVB bulbs uh, because I believe they're based in Europe. Um, but anything I mentioned, I'll try to put in the description. And if there's something not in the description, feel free to comment and let me know and I'll find it for you. But other than that, I hope this comprehensive guide was effective. It helped you, uh, you know, prepare for what a life with Aki monitors are like. They're great to have. They have awesome personalities. They're very active and fun to watch. Um, so I definitely recommend them. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more.